Greetings to you all, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I trust by the grace and the mercy of the Almighty God, you are all doing well this wonderful moment of time. This is the day the Lord has blessed us. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And today, it is a preparation day as we are preparing for the Sabbath. We are going to We are going to look into the part two of the subject, the clause of profession. And remember, last week we spoke about the first part of the part three of the clause of profession. And um, we were dealing with the subject that helped us to understand and to know the time we are in. And um, from our previous start of the part one, we also learned that the, because of the, of the rebellion of, of King Saul, because of his rebellion, God then he took the kingship. Then he gave it unto David. And um, we are still finding the King Saul wearing the crown, regarding himself as the king of Israel. But then it was very sad to say that too many people to the children of Israel, they were still looking up to King Saul as the king, but they didn't realize that his kingship, his crown, was taken away from him by God and was given to the man whom God chose for himself. And um, and on this subject as well, today we are going to look to the part two. And uh, part two, we are going to talk about the Protestant. And um, today, um. Praying to the Almighty God that He may help each one of us to pay a very good attention because the start of the clause of profession, it is the start of vital importance and uh, we need to listen very carefully and we need to examine everything so that we can able to know exactly the time we are in. Because very soon and very soon, child of God, I would like to remind you that... Um, we are going to witness the judgments being on um, the wrath of God being poured on this earth and also on the Christian churches. And um, all the people who are still attached to all these Christian denominational churches then will witness all this with their very own lives. Some will cry for mercy, but it's going to be very painful because mercy, it will be normal. Because he that is the source of, of everything, when he stood up, when Michael stands up, I will pray and ask that child of God you will make things right before he stands up. Because when he stands up, there will be no more mercy. So when the seven last plaques will be poured on this earth, well, child of God, we shall wish if we may die. But death, you know, it won't be available. So the protestant churches were raised by God. And um, entrusted with his precious messages of biblical truth. And after they separated from the corrupt Roman Catholic Church, which had already become Babylon, fallen, being rejected by God. Now, Roman Catholic, to, to clear up some stuff, we need to know that Roman Catholic, even from the very beginning, it was fallen. And uh, it, Roman Catholic, it is built upon paganism, which is why we are still finding them having the, um, the graven images within the um, buildings. So they have uh, the, the, the statue of Mary, the statue of Joseph, and the statue of Jesus Christ. And um, they walk around with some rosaries. And they believe that uh, rosary, it is the uh, step ladder going to heaven. And Mary is their med mediator. Since he is the mother of Jesus Christ, so they believe that Mary is the mother of God. So no one will go to the Father except he pass by Mary first. So now, Roman Catholic, all the Protestant churches, then they had to separate themselves from the Catholic, which is the mother church, the warrior of Babylon. And um, Roman Catholic is the warrior of Babylon. And we also need to... To know that from the book of Revelation chapter 17. And now, um, so after having separated themselves from the Catholic Church, then 
uh, we still now finding even this very day by by their doing on doing of their own will and uniting themselves with the world and the protestant churches became a harlot of babylon by the year of 1840 and to, were in danger of being rejected of God and other being the chosen to take their place. But now there's one thing I need you to understand very clear on this on the Protestant churches. So they were a harlot of Babylon in the year of 1840. They were not Babylon fallen at that time. So the Protestant church by 1840, when Miller Miller was giving the message, they were not yet the Babylon. They were a harlot because they were now going back and uniting with the what? With the world and also going back to their mother. So uh, there's this short um, quote I want to read from the book, The Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 239. And uh, Sister White said, at the proclamation of the first angel's message by 1840, and the people of God were in Babylon. So, let us bow our heads as we pray. We want to ask God right now to help us as we are going to look into more details. Because it is of vital importance to look everything and comparing the script of the scriptures so as to know what and where we are today. Now, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful moment of time. Thank you, God, for this blessed preparation day of the Sabbath. We are still looking forward, Father God, to the coming Sabbath of rest. It is the only blessed hour, a moment that reminds us of your special and um, a wonderful works of your hands. We thank you, Almighty God, for this blessed day. And we ask thee, Almighty, to guide our thoughts, open our minds, open our, our hearts that we may be able to be prepared to receive your weight this very day. And we ask thee, dear God, that as we look to this subject today, Father, please help us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Grant us your supply of your Holy Spirit to teach us and help us to understand all things and help us to prepare for very soon and very soon. We know very well that God, the judgments, your wrath will be poured on this earth, on the churches, Father, without mixture. So we pray, dear God, that you may help us to know so that we can be able to separate ourselves from Babylon right now while we can. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, today I want to say to you right now, um, so the, the churches, as we uh, read, the, the, were now a harlot of Babylon by the year of 1840. And, um, by God, uh, and the God's people were in, in this Babylon. So by the year of 1840, the churches, the Protestant churches now were halting with Babylon. And um, the God's people were still in Babylon by that time. And we're now seeing the first proclamation of the first angel's messages by 1840. And the call was to call people to fear God and to give glory to him. But then how do you fear God? When you fear God, then you cease from doing evil. When you fear God... You stop sinning. When, uh, when you fear God, then you need to separate yourself from every fallen denomination because it is very important to, to know the time and also when you fear God, then you need to make sure that where you are fellowshipping, it is a place that is holy where the Spirit of God is present on that time. Now, these churches were not yet Babylon fallen, so they all still had a chance to keep their chosen place by repentance and the reformation. And to try to accomplish this, God sent them a, a prayer's message, the first angel's message, which they accepted and would separate them from the world and sin there by allowing them to remain God's chosen church. And people When they first given this opportunity, the proclamation of the first angel was given to them. So this was a message for them to separate themselves from every fallen denomination. And um, by so doing, there was 
still hope for them for repentance and, and for reformation. So, that's why we are now saying that they were not yet Babylon. So, the response to, 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 to this call um, of the Protestant churches to the, this precious message and loving warning message from God, God sent these professed people a message that would have corrected them if their, their evils which separated them from his favor. But Babylon scornfully rejected the last means which heaven had in re, re, uh, reserve for her restoration. And then with greater and eagerness, she turned to seek the friendship of the world. Uh, this is from the Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, uh, and then page 236. All right. So Babylon, or the present churches as a body, refused to receive and spanned and they rejected this, me this merciful message and the last means which he had, uh, which heaven had in reverse, uh, reserved for her re restoration, if they would have favorably responded to this last chance of repentance, if they accepted the message of warning, if they turned uh, from whence they have fallen and come back to God, if they would uh, allow God to, to rebuke them from their evil deeds and then they go back, realize uh, their sinful state and then they go back to God and to be renewed to the covenant of love, then um, God was still going to offer them another chance. But then because of their, of, of their stubbornness of their hearts, they rejected the message given them. And um, um, because of that, we are now seeing today most of these churches, they are no longer called Protestant churches, but they are now evangelicals. So then, in other words, they are no longer uh, protesting against the men of sin. They are no longer protesting against the Antichrist. They are seeking friendship. And they are all united under the banner of ecumenism. The gods of Babylon. And um, we see all these things happening even on this very day. And which is why we need to understand the importance of this message in our time. Because the first angel's message was given in the time of um, 1840. And this was the time of the first proclamation of the message of warning given to them. To fear God and to be renewed to the covenant of love. And number two. On the fear of God, on the message of fear of God, there is a message again in which we need to understand. On Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7, there is one thing you need to understand. The message says, fear God, not gods. The message given by the first angel's messages, it is a call to worship one true God of the Bible, not a commit of gods we see even on this very day on the present churches they are actually advocating teaching their members to worship a comet of three different beings which they say they are not three but they are all one god so the call of the first angels message given in 1840 was a call to worship one true God of the Bible. When you fear God, you don't worship any other gods. Because the Bible says in the book of Exodus 20, Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. So we can see this very day, the reason why most of all, all of these Protestant churches are now fallen. And we are now under the third proclamation of the third angel's messages. And since it is the Lord's cry of the third angel's messages, this is a call. What does the Bible say in the book of Revelation 14? Revelation 14, uh, if you read in Revelation 14, uh, this, from this, um, all right, uh, turn with me in the book of Revelation 14, from this, um, 
9. Bible says in from the third angel's message from verse 9 through 11. This is the, the proclamation of the third angel's messages. Of, of the third angel's message, which is the Lord cry. And the Lord cry, it is what? Then followed, the third angel's message followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark on, on, on his forehead or on his hand. Now, under the third the proclamation of the third angel's messages, we, uh, we are now seeing the angel crying and saying, If anyone worship the beast and and what, what again? Worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. The beast, his image, and his mark. What is going on these days? What are we seeing on all around the world? What is happening? What is going on with the Protestant churches? The so-called Protestants, you know, and um, on this on this part, we are also dealing with the Seventh Day Adventist itself, because the Seventh Day Adventist it is it falls under the churches which have been called the Protestant churches, because the Seventh Day Adventist it is a group of people of believers who believe in the Second Advent of Christ, and also we protest against the Antichrist. Then, from the time when all our pioneers, when they were laid to rest, we see the falling away from the true path. We see the falling away from the true path. And um, as the result, and um, since um, from 1928, uh, we still find a man like Leroy Frum, and his um, colleagues were introducing the teachings of the Trinitarian where they promote the worship of three gods. And they believe that the Holy Spirit, it is not the Spirit of God, but it is God himself. And um, they say that even on the baptism of Christ, it was revealed three beings, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And now, there's always a problem with this belief system because it contradicts all the Bible. The Bible, there's no way in the Bible where we can find a phrase, God the Holy Spirit. We find um, more, more like 200 scriptures or, or more, two or 200 or more of scriptures that says, the Holy Spirit, it is the Spirit of God and also the Spirit of Christ. We read in the book of Galatians. Galatians, it says on Galatians 4 verse 6, We, God, because we are sons of God, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. And we read in the book of First Peter 1, 11, The Spirit of Christ was in the hearts of the prophets, showing them the things to come. We read in the book of Romans 8 verse 9, if anyone does not have, it says, we are no longer walking in the flesh, but in the spirit. If anyone does not have the spirit of God, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So what do, we, what do we learn from this? In the book of John as well, Christ, when he appeared to the, unto his disciples, when he appeared in the midst, then he said, peace be to you. After having said this, then he breathed upon them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. In, in Kim Jen's version, in other versions, it says, receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, it is still the same thing. Now, this is a problem of this belief. It contradicts the Bible. Bible is very clear. The problem with the majority, they do not care of what the truth, they only care about what they want the truth to be. But my brother and my sister, we come in a point where we need to decide for ourselves. Is it our church or it's, it's God's? You choose here this day whom you worship. You choose here this day. You need to decide now. 
And then the decision has been made every single day whether we, we, we will choose to accept God and His truth or we reject His truth and go by the majority. They decide, the choice has been made. And the time always decides against us. So if you think that when you just go around and go along with the majority, then it shall be well with your soul. I tell you this day that God will judge the living. And everybody will be judged according to the deed of his work, of his works. That's why in the book of in the book of Revelation, say Christ said, I am coming quickly. My reward did me to give everyone according to his works. So you will be given the reward according to the way how you have worked. So you need to choose right now while you can. You make sure that you make the right choices, not to go by the majority. And um, now, when the churches span the counsels of God by rejecting the Advent message, the Lord rejected them and by God from being his church and people and were declared to be Babylon fallen. God then chose another people, the Advent people, as his people and church instead. So when the when the churches spun the counsels of God by rejecting the Advent message, the Lord rejected them. The first angels was followed by the second proclaiming Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So this is from the Spirit of Prophets, Volume 4, and page three uh, two three two. So now again we are seeing the departure from the from the from uh, from the truth of these uh, of of these uh, of these churches, and when they depart from their true path, in other words, they are no longer walking in the footsteps of Christ, and their union and marriage with the with the world made them a harlot of Babylon with the chance to repent. God mercifully sent them one last message and granted them the precious time to come back into his waiting arms. But Babylon scornfully reject the means which yet in re uh, reserve for her re restoration as God's faithful chosen church. Then the Lord rejected them forever. Mm. Wow. So when you reject when you when 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 the when the method is being given to each one of us, as uh, we know very well that we, when we go to the assembly to gather together in the those buildings, and uh, when we have been given the warning messages of repentance, God gave us this warning message so as to help us to to know whence we have fallen, and if we we accept the warnings, then God will. Welcome us back unto his loving arms. For he waits every single day to receive us unto himself as a body. But the problem is, as in the days of old, under the proclamation of the, of the first and the second angels' messages, the churches, they refused and they rejected them, the warning message given them. And by so doing, God then rejected them forever. So let's look back to, for a moment to the children of Israel. They were God's chosen people. And because of their rebellious hearts, they rebelled against God in first instance on their way from Egypt to Canaan. They, God gave them the bread to eat. But some, because they wanted to, to still live in the life of Egypt. So many people were physically out of the land of Egypt but their hearts were still in Egypt. They loved the, um, some cake and cookies of, um, of Egypt, the meats, the birthday day celebration, uh, the Easter celebration, the worship of foreign gods and all the kinds and such like. And on their way of, from Egypt to Canaan, they rebelled against God. They even mocked God when he gave them the bread to eat, the manna from heaven. And the manna we believe it is the body of Christ because Christ is the only lamp of God which was we walking with them. He is the rock which they drink water from. He is the fire, the pillar of fire by night. 
he, that was warming them, and is the cloud by day. So Christ is the, the bread which was given to them. And many people, they rejected the, the bread, so then they had to complain and cry for meat. And we're still finding the same people in our time who are still crying. God is telling us every single day, because you know what is best for our health. You know what is best for us. For us to live eternally with Him. Because this, this earth, it is a testing place. We are right here. So as to prepare ourselves to live with Him. So therefore, each one of us has to pass his or her test. But the problem is, when we are surrounded by, by the majority, we tend to... Go with the cry of the majority. Well, well. My friends, we need to understand this because this is of vital importance. So we need to make sure that we forsake all these things. We must cease from doing evil so that we can live eternal with Him and also we can be granted the Holy Spirit to help us to prepare for what is about to break on this earth as a surprise. So, the churches then become Babylon, fallen. The progression for, of the church is forever closed from ever being used by God again as his church. Because of their rejection of the Advent message, because of their rejection of the first and second angels message, God rejected them. And now when you have been rejected by God, then you are no longer being used by God. In other words, the probation for them to repent, it is no more. Then you are not going to be used by God to proclaim his messages. Yes, then you can go around and, and this is that. But the spirit of God, it is no longer in your midst. So this is what we are learning from this uh, part two of um, this um, start series. Now, and... The very fact that God had chosen the Advent people as his people and the church proves that he had forever cast away the Protestant churches as his church. But just like with the King Saul, who continued to wear the crown, even though God had forever rejected him as king. So the Protestant churches, they continue to appear that they were still God's church and people. So the multitude of innocent members being ignorant of the change continued to believe that the Protestant churches were still God's church. And now we, many people that still believe that. They still believe that. They still believe. While the truth of God had already rejected them forever and already chosen another group. And this continued to be the case with the people until the startling truth was proclaimed that God already set these churches aside that they were now Babylon fallen. So now, what makes these churches become Babylon fallen? Number one, they rejected the, the, the first angel's messages. They rejected the second angel's messages. And on the first end, those messages, it deals with the, the, the call to worship one true God of the Bible and His Son, Christ Jesus. And also in believing in their wonder, wonderful working power, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it is the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ. God gave His Spirit unto His Son. And Christ since he's standing right there in the heavenly sanctuary on the midst of the seven ghetto candlesticks, then you breathe upon us. He is a spirit. And um, the many churches, they believe that the Holy Spirit, it is not the spirit of God. It is not the spirit of Christ. So because of their rejection of these messages, God rejected them because he cannot be in the midst of the people who are busy worshipping the counterfeit spirit which is the spirit or the spirit of the devil 
And uh, this spirit of the devil, it is known as God, the Holy Spirit. This is the devil who, who, who is being worshipped in many churches this very day. Many people, they keep the Sabbath, but they are worshipping a false god. False gods in the right day of worship. And um, this has resulted them as being fallen. Which is why in 1840, under the first end of Methodist, God gave them the message to call them to beg to worship God of the Bible, not to worship in other gods, but because they reject the message, God then reject them as his own people. We are still finding this message in our time. And we need to pay a very good attention. We need to ask God individually because Last time in our first part, we talked about the progression of individual as individual at large. Remember, the first thing it happens to the, the, the judgments always begin in the house of God. And from there, it, then it goes to the whole world at large. So if the judgments begin in the house, then goes to the, to the whole world at large. In other ways, so is the progression the progression is to close first in the house, which is the Protestant churches. And then when it has been closed right there, it goes now as to the, what you call the shut door. And during the time of Noah, we see the open and the shut door. And the shut door, it represents the close of progression of, of the whole world at large. So my brother and my sister, the door is still open for us this very day, individually. We need not to make any mistake to reject the given warning messages because we are listening to what uh, most of the famous preachers are saying out there. Most of the pastors and preachers out there, they are busy proclaiming another gospel to, to say that we must be remain connected or joined to to a corporate denomination so as to be saved because they believe that salvation is only found when you are a member of a corporate denomination but then we are forgetting that God's chosen church it is not a building it is not a denomination God's church is a group of believers, which is why Christ then, even on the time of Christ, he never even bothered himself of what the, the Pharisees and the Jews were saying because there were so many synagogues during the time of Christ. But then Christ came not to uphold and promote the synagogues because he understands though that there is so much of creeds and the creeds which are the traditions of men, the doctrines of men. But then he chose his own church. Then he stuck only with, with his 12 brothers. So this was the church of Christ. And they were preaching the gospel of the kingdom during his time. And we see his gospel, even though it took him unto Calvary. The ones who crucified, who crucified Christ, these are the leaders of the churches. Of the, but they are something like we can call them now. They are the pastors and the presidents of the of the uh, the general conference of his time, and the pastors and, and the elders of the churches of the, of his time. They all united and joined with the state because Rome, Pilate was um, a leader and the ruler of, of Rome. So they unite together and then they crucified Christ. And we are still going to witness all this, uh, this incidents in our time. And I believe that there are some of the people right now who are witnessing this uh, by being disfellowshipped because of their belief. They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe in the women ordination. They don't believe in the issue of uh, LGBT, gender equalities. They don't believe in the, um, in the worship of the dead. 
They don't believe in that. They don't believe in the smooth messages, which have been, like we can call them the brother love, where people, they are saying, um, let's just unite. And because the body of Christ is one, let's unite together. And even though they unite in lies, to them it doesn't matter, as long as they unite. That's what they want. And it is what we are seeing this very day being promoted by so many churches, including the Seventh-day Adventist, which is the church that says they have the light. And um, this church, it was raised and started by, by Christ himself so as to bring the light to the world. But um, due to the death of our pioneers, we find the men who have crept in and they bring the doctrines of infidels, introduce the books of infidels, and um, also the deletion of the writings of Ellen White, and um, also denying the writings of, uh, of our pioneers, of James White, Joseph Bates, Labaro, J.H. Andrews, and other. They say that all those writings, they are not good. And also to the writings of A.T. Jones. A.T. Jones, he was very, very straightforward. James White was very straightforward on the issue of worship gods because he stated that the worship of gods, which is where we find the, also the Sunday, law, the Sunday, Sunday observance, it is also attached to the worship of the Trinity. And uh, we see after all the death of our pioneers, there was no one to stand up for the truth once delivered to the old saints, according to the book of Jude 1, um, we are now finding the men like Neil Wilson advocating for the Trinity. And in 1980, it was, um, there was a meeting in Dallas, Texas, and it was now voted officially by 1981. And um, now, when you are joining, you are now being examined and tried by, by their creeds. Because they'll try you with what is written in their books and in their manual, church manuals, to say, do you believe in the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit that they were both involved in the plan of creation? Do you believe that both of these three individuals, they were both involved in the plan of redemption? And um, this is what has been done. And uh, this is their creed. So before you join, and when you want to join, you have to be tried by their creeds, uh, which is um, very unfortunate. And um, and uh, if you try to to raise some sentence unto many people, then you'll be named. They call you by so many names, and some, you used to call them the friends. They'll even block you on WhatsApp. They block you on Facebook. They even block you. They don't even want to feel to associate with you anymore. Because you are now their enemy. You know, um, you know, like people these days, they are working by feelings and emotions. And um, I don't know where they are heading. They, where are they heading to? Because when, uh, when you're working with some feelings and emotions, well, well, I'll tell you that you are not working in the spirit. Because when you are working in the spirit, then you know, don't even allow your emotions and your, your feelings to control you. Because... Lucifer knows very well that the only people who are not going to make it to heaven are the people who walk by feelings and the, the, some emotions. So, okay, let me read again from the book, The Upward Look, uh, page 131. Sister White says, The Lord Jesus Christ will always have a chosen people to save him. When the Jewish people rejected Christ, the, the Prince of Life, he took from them the kingdom of God. And gave it unto the Gentiles. God will continue to work on these principles every, with every branch of his work. When a church proves unfaithful to the work of the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, the Lord can no longer work with them. Others are then chosen to be a important responsibilities. But if they, if this in, intend to do, not purify their life from every wrong action if they do not establish pure and holy principles in 
all their borders, then the Lord will grievously afflict and humble them. And unless they repent, will remove from them their place and make them a reproach. This is what they the Lord do. If the church proves not to be faithful, if she chooses not to remain faithful in the eyes of God, if she rather compromise and sell the truth for the sake of wanting to be loved by the, by the world in the majority, God will take from, from her the kingdom and give it unto the Gentiles. Same is during the time of the, of the Jewish nation. The Jewish nation were chosen people of God. And because of their rebellion, Christ then he took off their kingdom and gave it unto the Gentiles. So is in our time. We know very well that We know as the Advent people, God chose us to be the light, to be the light bearers. But because of this rebellious which we are witnessing of this very day, because of this apostasy, because of this stubbornness of the hearts, these pastors out there are be saying, come on, well, you know, don't worry about them. Don't preach about the judgment message. Don't preach about them. You are scaring people. Oh, really? We're no longer preaching about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is the papacy. But we are still finding the, like the leaders say, no, the, the mark of the beast is the worship of any other day other than the Sabbath. Well, where are you getting that from? Are you scared to stand up for the truth? Are you scared? Well, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You know, like this is a time of gathering. This is a time of gathering. The world is busy gathering. And Christ is busy, is busy gathering. We need to prepare souls right now for the final harvest. The gathering time. Read Revelation 16. God is gathering his people. And the world is busy gathering. So which side are you going to, to be found on? Which side? Lord's side on or sees us. You need to choose yet this very day. Remember. The decisions have been made. So. From this. We can find. A very beautiful explanation. And. Um, we need to understand. That. The Israelites rejected. The message of God. They chose to worship. On facing the east. And worshipping of the sun. And um, their women were busy crying for Tammuz. Tammuz is the baby of the family. Now the mother and the, the father and the mother. And the baby of the family. And the head of that is Lucifer. And this is, this is been done this very day. Among the people whom God chose for himself to be the light bearers. And there is a falling away, a departure from God's truth since 19, since 1900s. We're finding the man creeping in like the man, like John Harvey Kellogg. He brought the doctrines of the Omega of apostasy. In his book, The Living Temple, The Living Temple contains the Omega of apostasy. After John Harvey Kellogg, we still find Anderson, Leroy Fromm, and all other, they all promote the same doctrine. And from them we find Neil Wilson. And even Neil Wilson stated very plainly in the book, The Review and Herald, that there is a universal, another, another universal Catholic church, which is called the Seventh-day Adventist. Why did he say that? Because by acceptance of the Trinity gods, you become, by accepting the, the gender equalities, women ordination, women pastors, women elders, you become, by accepting the LGBT, where you promote lesbianism, 
gayism you have become in your hospitals by promoting abortions you have become like catholic your patterns your church buildings it is the same as the catholic buildings what difference does it make is it a day whereas you are united in doctrines in faith you are working with the same mind you are in actually working your patterns and everything it is catholic so then you try to rationalize and say come we are not we are not like catholics our doctrine is different from the catholic yet at the same time it is the same trinity which is the foundation where the catholic is built upon trinity does not come in different flavors it is the same doctrine from the origin or manufactured by lucifer to steal souls from the kingdom of god because when you believe in the god the son god the holy spirit you are actually worshiping lucifer lucifer you wanted to be worshipped you failed to establish the trinity in heaven you wanted to be worshipped in heaven this is why bible says lucifer rebelled against god you want to be worshipped and this very day because you know very well of the sanctuary in heaven then he seek to make his own sanctuary on earth then he successfully made his own sanctuary now he has got his own symbols the obelisk which is the green pillar which is a sign of a male organ which we now find in many Adventist churches and we still find it on Catholic churches and all the churches that has got the male organ on the top of their buildings which is the obelisk or a graven pillar and the same organ that we find on the Vatican city square it is the symbol of Lucifer devil and Satan and all the churches that has got this symbol, they promote abortion. Well, well. So let me ask you a question. Yes, the sins of the present church reach heaven now. Because... Definitely, the probation has been closed upon corporately. And which is why God is calling. is a loud cry of the third angel's message. The third angel's message is given when the probation has been closed for corporately. A corporate body, when it, the probation is been closed then the cry of the third angel's message is given so as to call God's people who are within, who are still in Babylon, to come out and separate themselves from that body which is fallen, so as not to be partake in his sins, so as not to receive the same plagues. Because very soon, under the third angel's message, there is, a pro there is a cry given. And if you refuse to come out, well, the wrath of God is going to be poured without mixture. And those who will remain connected, they will die in your midst. Uh, I think in the, in the first part we talk about this, where... Um, I think there was a man uh, given by God to give the message to King Saul. And because of his refusal to, to separate himself from, 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 uh, from, 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 from the camps of, 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 of Israel by that time, then he died along with the, with, the, with the rest of the people because of his rebellion. Because if God sent you to be the light bearer, is not saying go and stay in the midst. You go and give the warning message. For example, Sister White said we must get out of the cities. 
In other words, if you want to go and evangelize in the seat, you go in the seat and evangelize, and then when you're done evangelizing, then you go back in your place of residence. In the outskirts, you go there and hide there and, and, and stay there where you get able to be free. And uh, live by the mess of, of, of the Almighty God. So, when you refuse to, 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 to separate yourself from, from the corporate body, which is already fallen, God is going to, when God sends his judgments upon, you will be taken along with you. And you'll die with them. So, now I want to say, um, let me read this again. Um, I think it's um, from the Spiritual Gifts, Volume 1, page 190 through 191. And we can also find it in the book, Early Writings. To page 274 and 275. Um, I was shown the pride of the nominal churches. And the nominal churches, these are the Protestant churches. So, I was shown the, the pride of the nominal churches. Christ and the angels look upon them in anger. Said the angel, their sins and pride have reached unto heaven. Their portion is prepared. Justice and judgment have slumbered long, but will soon awake. And innumerable, innumerable hosts of evil angels are spreading themselves over the whole land. And... Churches and religious bodies are crowded with them. Did you hear that? Let me please re repeat this uh, statement again. I, I need you to understand it very clearly. So, remember, we, we, I, I posed a question where we, I said, yes, the sins of the, of the corporate bodies or of the Protestant churches reached heaven. So now, Sister White is now giving us the answer to that question. So as to help you and I to know that the sins of the corporate bodies which are no longer protesting against the men of sin, the Antichrist, their sins, he has reached heaven. So now Sister White is now saying, I was shown the pride of the nominal churches which are, number one, we can also involve the Advent people, the Seventh-day Adventist corporate body at large, your sins and your pride. Because of your pride, because you said, I am rich and I'm in need of nothing. I am rich because I know the Bible truth. You see, the Adventist people are the people who were chosen by God to be the light bearers. But, because of their pride, you see, you might have the knowledge and you can still kill yourself. I've said this last time. Which is why we need the wisdom of Proverbs 28. You might have the knowledge. Many people, Advent people, they have the knowledge of the truth. But they are killing themselves because they are not applying it in their daily lives. You may have the knowledge and you have the knowledge about of the Sabbath, about the sanctuary messages, about the health messages. But are we bearing the light given us? No. Now, Christ and the angels look upon them in anger, said, uh, said the angel, their sins and pride have reached unto heaven, their portion is prepared. Justice and judgments have slumbered long, but will soon awake. And an innumerable host of evil angels are spreading them, themselves over the whole land. 
and churches and the religious bodies are crowded by what? By the evil angels. You could ask yourself these very days because there are so many things which are happening right now uh, amidst all these bodies. There are many things which are happening now amidst of all the churches these very days. And you could ask yourself because Sister Watch was shown and when she was shown, the angels, which are the angels of darkness, were all over these religious bodies. And um, these bodies are crowded by the evil angels, which is why there is so much hatred, there is so much anger, there is a people who walk by sight, there is people who have been con who walk by feelings and emotions. When you raise your points of what the Bible says, they disfellowship you and all many things. It is because the angels of darkness, they finally take charge of everything. Now, in the book Testimonies, Volume 2, page 449, October 2, 1868, Sister White said, The sins of the nominal churches you have reached unto heaven, and the honest in heart will be brought to the light and come out of them. Now, as I have said, under the proclamation of the loud cry of the third angel's message, it is a warning given to the people who are still in Babylon to come out of them and be separate. Why do we have to come out? Because Revelation 18 verse 4. Revelation 18 is a message given to the people to say, please come out now before the wrath of God is being poured without mixture. So, some will say, if I come out of the Adventist churches, where will I go? Let me tell you something. When you come out of every fallen, because to many of you who are saying, uh, church militant, and, and such, come on, guys. The time is now. We need to know what is happening. The very day when they accept the Trinity, the very day when they accept the women ordination, the very same day when they accept them LGBT, the very same day when they promote abortion, the very same day when they promote, you know, once saved, always saved, the very same day when they promote you can be saved in your sins, the very same day when they even say, we're no longer identifying the Pope as the Antichrist, they have become fallen. Because the call of Revelation 18, it is not a call to the church which was in the same state of fallen, but it has become fallen. Revelation 18, read it very nicely. It says, fallen, fallen. Revelation 14, verse 8. What happened again? Fallen, fallen. So, my brother and my sister, the call is now to every individual who is still united to the bodies which are now fallen. We need to come out and be separate while the time of probation lingers. So, therefore, when a church... Alright, um, sorry for a moment. So... So, therefore, when, when a church denomination has rejected God and declared to be Babylon fallen, is when you have been rejected by God. When a church denomination, when it is finally rejected by God, that is when you become Babylon fallen. And that church's probation is already closed corporately. And is doomed for destruction, even though they continue to grow worse in sin. Any members who continue to cling to that doomed church, instead of listening to and obeying the loud cry message to separate from it 
and join Christ and these true people outside will be lost along with the church. Well, well. My brother and my sister, this is very serious. We need to pay very good attention because the time it is now where the loud cry of the third angel's meeting is given, message is given this very day. So, when you choose to go along with what the Bible, what the majority are saying to say, you remain connected, stay in the ship. You stay in the ship of lies. And soon when the judgments have been poured on this earth without mixture, that is when you realize, you will come to your senses, and then you're going to fight with your pastors. You're going to fight with them because you say, why didn't you tell me this? Why didn't you give me the warning to know that uh, I need to separate myself from every fallen denomination? While there was still time for repentance, while there was hope for repentance. Because the probation is closed, there is closed for corporately for corporate denominations, these denominations which were the chosen churches of God, but because of their stiffness of their hearts, they choose not to continue to proclaim the messages, but rather accept and seek unity. So now the Lord cry of the Revelation 18 is given now. It is not a future message because I remember um, I remember sharing this and um, there was I think uh, there are something like four brothers uh, 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 brothers who, who say to me the large cry of Revelation 18 it is not a message of which must be proclaimed now it is a future message then I asked them some questions because we need to understand something, some things. If the first angel's message was given in 1840 and the second and the third angel's message were given in that time. So, do you want to tell me that this message is not applying to us now? The, do you want to tell me that all of the things which are happening around you are not even sufficient to help you to understand that now is a time to give a trumpet a certain sound. You see, when you listen to false preachers, they'll give you wrong messages and you remain sitting right there in your comfort zone, thinking that God is still happy, thinking that God is still with your denominations, still thinking that the Spirit of God is still in your midst. How many of you remember the statement by Ellen White where she said that there was two groups of people and this group of people the careless, the careless people, when others, when they were bowing down on the, before Christ, when Christ was, was in the holy place, before the throne, they were all bowing down and praying and saying unto Christ, give us your Holy Spirit. And when Christ, when he moved from the throne and then he got to the most holy place, these people, the careless, they were right there, and Lucifer, then he come and then he stand by, as if he appeared by the city, and uh, then, when these careless, when they were praying to say, give us the Holy Spirit, and Lucifer was now sending them the Spirit, and this is, in this Spirit which, Christ, which they received from Lucifer, in it, there was hatred, they was jealous and uh, no love in it. So now, in other words, when you don't, when you are receiving the kind of the spirit, the spirit of God, there is love, gentleness, goodness, temperance, long suffering, and many things. But in the kind of the spirit, hatred, jealous, envy, grudges. Let him ask you, 
If Sister White said, the general conference is no longer the voice of God, do you tell me that I should remain connected to, to it, whereas the providence of God herself choose to separate from it herself before she died? So do you want to tell me now this very day that I should remain connected to it whereas the prophet of God was shown in the spirit by God himself that I, at first I regarded the general conference of the Seventh-day Adventist as the voice of God but now that the time is past. If the time is past, in other words, she is no longer. She has become fallen. No matter how much you may try to say and try to justify. Brothers and sisters, the truth, it will remain. And the truth will always prevail. To every individual who is still connected to or every fallen denomination. Now is the time to come out. Separate yourself therefore while the probation lingers. The message of warning are given to you. Make things right this very day. Before probation closed for individuals, my brother and my sister, read with me in the book Last Day Events, page 7 8. The message of the angel of Revelation 18, following the third, is now to be given to all parts of the world. It is to be the harvest message, and the world, the whole earth will be. Lighted with the glory of God. The Lord has this one last call of mercy to give to the world. But the, the perversity of man diverts the work from its true bearing. And the light has to struggle amid the darkness of men who feel themselves con um, competent to do a work that God has not appointed them to do. This is what Sister White said. The time to give this message of Revelation 18, the loud cry, is now. And again, she said in the book, um, Last Day Events, page 83. All are to, to hear the last message of warning. The prophecies in the book of Revelation chapter 12 to 18 are being fulfilled Right now, in the 18th chapter is recorded the very last call to the churches. This call is now to be given. Wow. In the light of probation being closed, it is high time for all of God's honest and true people to rise up and give the Lord cry message of Revelation 18 to all the churches which have become fallen, my brother and my sister, if there was a time in which you and I have to give the trumpet a certain sound, the time is now. Don't be fooled by the pastors out there. Don't be fooled by the leaders, by the elders to say the time to give the Lord cry is in the future time. No, the time is now. Sister White says in the book, The Last Day Events on page page. 7, 8. The time is now to give the loud cry of Revelation 18 following the third angel's message of which part? Revelation 14. Now, if the time is now to give this trumpet a certain sound, then you need to stand up and to come back to your, to your senses. The time to give the awakening message is now. One do you, my brother, won't you, my sister, say this very day, Lord Jesus, I was in darkness, but I want to be used by you to give the trumpet a certain sound. Now, because I've realized this, I want you, Lord God, to help me to make things right this very day. Brother and sister, separate yourself from every fallen denomination. It does not matter, my brother. It does not matter, my sister, because... There is a part in which I want to say in closing to what Sister White said in the book, The Upward Look. In the book, Upward Look, page 131, Sister White, Sister White said something I want to close with right now as we're going to look to part three tomorrow during the Sabbath time. We're going to look to 
the part three of uh, the clause of probation. And Sister White said, because there are many, many people, pastors and preachers out there, because they are saying, because, because of the name Seventh-day Adventist, therefore, uh, this corporate body or denomination, it cannot be fallen. It cannot be called Babylon. It cannot be called like that because they still say they are the chosen people of God. So if the people, the Jews back in the olden days, they rejected the message given to them and they become fallen and God took the kingdom away from them and then he gave it unto the Gentiles. So is the Adventist this very day. Um, pay attention to what she said. She said right here, the Lord Jesus will always have a chosen people to save him. When the Jewish people reject Christ, the Prince of Life, he took from them the kingdom of God and gave it unto the Gentiles. God will continue to work on his principles with every branch of his work. When a church proves unfaithful to the work of the Lord, whatever their position may be, however high and sacred their calling, the Lord can no longer work with them. Now, this is what Sister White said. It does not matter how high your calling. It does not matter that you are the chosen. If you prove unfaithful and there's been a departure from God's truth and the cry for the majority is bow, bow, Lord. Bow, bow, Lord. They say, we will not have Christ, the only begotten Son of God. We see in the book of Revelation of um, John 3, 16, for God loved the world. We still find the book of John 17, verse 3. This is life internal, that they may know thee, one true God, and your only Son, Christ Jesus, whom thou hast sent. And what is the cry of the majority? They cry and say, God the Son, Christ is not the Son of God. He is not only the begotten Son. He is them. A role playing. Do we have a metamorph metamorph metamorphological heaven? If he is a metaphor, do we have a, a, a metaphor, metaphor heaven? Because if you are saying all these things this very day, to so many of you pastors there who are saying to us, well, we, Christ is not the Son of God. He is God Himself. Yes, Christ is God. But not the Lord God Almighty. You are a human. And I am a human. Your Son is a human. You are a human. And your Son is human. So he is the Father and the Son. You are human. And your Son is human. But you are not of the same age with your with, with your with your with your son. The fact that you are a human, your your son is the right to be called a human. But your, your your son is not your father. You are not of the same age. He came out. Christ came out of the father. That's why he says he is the only begotten son of God. But he is not of the same age with the father. He is the son. The Bible is very clear on that matter. So to Adventists, they were saying, come on, you know, you need to repent. Because tomorrow we're going to touch on the clause of probation to the Adventist at large. In the part three, this is the part three, and we will consider if probation is closed for the Seventh-day Adventist organization tomorrow. We are going to look into this or uh, during the Sabbath hours because we need to know, redeem the time for days are evil. My brother and my sister, let us come out and be separate while we can. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, what in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your message of warning and I thank you that God, the, the message come in the right time. A time in which we need to prepare. It is a gathering time. 
We are being prepared, Father, right now for the final harvest. We ask thee, O oh God, to help us to make things right with thee, to give the trumpet a certain sound, to give the world a message, the Lord cry, to call the people out of the Babylon and be united unto thee. Is our prayer and play. Is I going to look to the, the last part of this start? We pray, oh God, that you may help us, our brothers and sisters out there, please help them to understand that soon and very soon the progression will be closed for the world at large, which is the shut door in the Noah's time. Father, we pray and ask, help us to seek your presence, to seek righteousness for your name's sake. We thank you, Almighty God, in Christ's name. We pray, Amen. May the Lord help us, and may the Lord keep you, my brother and my sisters, as we're going to look forward to the part three tomorrow, which is the part three, where we are going to consider if the probation is closed for the Seventh Day Adventist organization. So until then.